Yo, what is up, my little tubers? We're back with some more drafting here on the streets of Arena. Got some more of this mom draft. As always, thanks for watching. Hit that like and subscribe if you haven't already. Let's push towards that 69. Nice. 1,000 subscriber mark. And don't forget to check out cardkingdom.com slash Numot for all of your magic card needs. We opened another Guardian of Girapur. I think I opened this card yesterday's video first pick as well. It's good enough to take. 3-3 eh, three, three flying. Extra value. What's not to love? I keep saying I want to do another 5 color deck. And then we keep getting forced into these like good aggressive strategies. So hopefully this time I'm going to first pick this Guardian. And then we're going to do some good 5 color stuff. Other good cards in the pack. Renata's Dece. Tiller of Flesh is good. Portent Tracker. Bunch of good 2 drops. Give me the Guardian. Give me something good. Let me go five color. Okay. 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 We have some options here. We have some options. I have not been a big fan of Elspeth Smite, but it is an okay removal spell if you need. Uh, we're definitely not going to take it here over of some of the other cards. If you wanted to stick with white, that would be fine. Awakening and Intercessor are both good. I think here I'm going to take the final flourish over the Skittering Surveyor, though. Remember, my rules for this format, if you want to force five color, are removal and fixing above anything. The bombs will come later. Don't worry about the filler. You want the removal and fixing first, and final flourish is a great removal spell. So let's go with that. Okay, then this is another good pack for us. Um, There's removal. There's no fixing per se. Oh, no, that's not true. There is fixing. There's removal, there's fixing, and then there are just solid creatures all around. In fact, I want a lot of cards from this pack. I'm going to take the Spite, because the removal's most important. But Agent is like pseudo-removal and a good creature. Mauler's good for swamp cycling. Blighted Burgeoning's great remo uh, rather great fixing, plus a 2-2 body. Tracker's just good. Gargantua, another awakening. Okay. Let's do this. Any fixing or removal here? Not really. I don't like Urn of Godfire. I think that card's pretty weak overall. Though it is te technically... The it's, it's funny. I don't like this card, but it is not only fixing, it is also removal. So you think that would be a little bit better, but it's it's just not very good. Um, Eryxmethes is fun. The, the problem with Eryxmethes is that there are some just really easy ways to deal with it. Like, if you flip this into a creature and your opponent just uses a dispersal on it it's so so bad kind of don't mind taking like the gain for draw a card here buy us a little time get us a little bit deeper in the deck seems like an okay choice for now Zalfirin Lancer uh, that's a good one that's for the aggressive deck. What do we want to do for the five color deck? Like card draw? Somebody keeps wanting me to take Omen Hawkers and the Urns. I don't remember who it was among YouTubers, but they keep posting that I should take Omen Hawker and Urn. That's not even that good. <laughs> uh, I don't want to just take the meeting of minds here for some extra card draw. I mean, the best card here is Lancer. We could probably have a really good start to a white aggressive deck. God, I don't want to do aggro, though. I want to do five color, but this is... there's They're not giving me a reason to. There's no fixing. I mean, I guess card draw is kind of fixing, but... Okay, good, 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 good. Let's take the burgeoning over the blighted... Sorry, the uh, blighted burgeoning over the rugged highlands. I think... Generally, when you're doing the five color fun stuff, you want to be baseline green when you can, just because green has the most fixing. So let's go like with that. All right. Six picks in, we have all five colors. Let's get a Swiftwater Cliffs here. Feels good. I'm in. I'm in, I'm in, I'm in. And remember, the reason that you do this is because there are so many bombs uh, available in this format. And because you open, you know, normal rare, you can open a um, flashback rare or whatever they're called, you're going to see bombs in the draft because by packs 
by pack three and sometimes even pack two, people have kind of solidified what they're going to be doing. So if you're playing the, like the red blue convoke deck and you open a boon bringer, um, angel or whatever, boon bringer Valkyrie, you're not going to take that. And like, that is just a very common occurrence in this format, especially since there are some really fun five color bombs in the format as well that kind of lean in toward that as well. I mean, you have niv Mizzet, you have the shards of, or not shards of Alara, you have the invasion of Alara, you have Omnath. As so we maybe just take a second meeting of minds here. I really hope we wheel one of those portent trackers, although I don't expect it to. Um, so any duel right now is a pretty good pickup because we already have all five colors. We have a couple pieces of removal, fixing, card draw, and a 3-3 three, three flyer for three. I'm all right with this start. There's the Portent Tracker. Oh, hell yeah. And Portent Tracker with Blighted Burgeoning is just super amazing. Something I've done in this format already is, unlike some land enchantments, um, the Blighted Burgeoning, you can stack them. It just says whenever enchanted land is tapped for mana, its controller adds an additional one of any color. So it doesn't give it like a, an ability to tap for two mana. It just adds one. Which means you can stack burgeonings on one land, and then with Portent Tracker, like if I have two burgeonings, that's six mana with two taps. Windscarred Crag here is fantastic. Tidal Terror is also not bad. And even Invasion of Ergamon makes a treasure, but lands are always going to be the good picks there. That's a pretty late Invasion of Ragatha. Super, super potent cards. Or super, super potent effect in the uh, whatever... Um, battles deck or more a more aggressive deck i will take the urn i might not play it but i don't think this card is absolutely unplayable i just think it's middle tier at best like i would much rather have blighted burgeoning than urn of godfire let's put it like that let's see some random creatures or a little bit of card selection perhaps okay last few pickups don't matter there <laughs> yeah baby one of the best cards one of the best payoffs for the five color deck that's kenrith the returned king what a crazy card at the very worst case scenario it's a five five for five right and that's not even that bad and limited and then you just read all of the text so creatures gain trample and haste until end of turn that can be relevant put a one one counter on a creature that can be relevant gain five that is usually the most relevant because in the five color deck you're kind of on the back foot to start so the gain five can just set you up real nice draw a card put a creature from a graveyard onto the battlefield in your control now owner's control i should say um the problem with taking kenrith here is i'm losing one of the best cards for this deck and that is the invasion of zendikar i every time i play with this card is just amazing it's four mana for double ramp slash fix and it's only got three defense we're also passing Kroxa and Kun like this is a nutty pack i'm gonna take the kenrith and we're going to hope hope that we can get paid off with some other goodies. And wow, what is this pack? Thrill Seeker is great. This is like the third or fourth Awakening we've seen. Intercessor's good. And then there's a Kenra Spell Spear here. I'm going to take the Intercessor because it looks like white is going to be one of our main colors. So it's kind of fixing. It's also a good creature at the top end. Crazy pack, though. A lot of good cards there. It's the Jungle Hollow for some good fixing. There's no removal here, so the land is nice. Uh, volcanic Spite very easily over the Bloodfell Caves now. Yeah, this is going well. Shatter the Source. Another big removal spell. This one can also flip battles, though we only have one of those currently. I wonder what the best deck for the seat would have been if I wasn't forcing five color. Like, I've seen a lot of good red-white aggressive stuff for sure. That's a nice one. Green land cycling versus blue land cycling. Actually, my blue is not even that important right now. I could just cut the meeting of mines. 
and maybe go more of a, a four color or even like a three color deck, but this is looking juicy. Removal, fixing, wow, another spite. This one's seventh pick. I guess we are going to go heavier red then. Because we always want to have spite available on like turn two. And spite is kind of like fixing, you know? You can take an uncastable card from your hand, put it on the bottom, and then draw a fresh card. So this is probably one of the better removal spells that we can currently get access to. I guess the Swiftwater Cliffs is probably not doing much. Although, you know, we'd still run a card like this even if we don't end up with a blue card just because the random times that uh, we get the Kenrith and might want to draw a card, you know? Fun start. Fun start for sure. Three, three, reach for three seems okay over the mountain cycler. Oh no, I guess we just take the mountain cycler here, don't we? I've been impressed with War Historian though. It's not some crazy common, but it's just solid. Yeah, yeah, I think we have to take the mountain cycler here though. Little bit too important. All right, so that gives us three land cyclers. Intercessor on the wheel, huh. Over second jungle hollow. I mean, I don't really have a reason to be playing black. Maybe we are just Naya. Naya good stuff. I know we're going to get past something in black in pack three, but that's fine. I could also splash Unsealed the Necropolis. This is another really, really good one with all the land cyclers. Take that for a maybe play. Seed of Hope. This gets awkward when I have a lot of burn spells, but it's not a bad one. Um, actually, I guess I'd rather have Dreadship here for two creatures for three mana at this point. That's a late Gargantua. Okay, another Black Fixer. I'm surprised we haven't seen too many big bombs getting passed to us here yet, but this is still pack two, so I would at the very least expect pack three to give us um, some amount of big boys. Red, white, green, splash, black. Haven't seen much green, though. <laughs> Look at that. Could have had a nasty red-white deck, I'm sure. No big deal. We're going for the fun. One, two, three, four. Okay, need a few playables in the last pack. What are you going to do? Sometimes it's just meant to be. This card's not even that good. It is funny, though. Like, <laughs> seven defense to flip it is so much. I guarantee you the best or the correct choice here is just Norn's Inquisitor and you wheel the Invasion of Alara. Like, Norn's Inquisitor is one of the best uncommons in the format, and I'm not exaggerating by any means. Comes down on turn two, it's a 1 1 and a 3 3, and it has value with all of your other flip cards. It's not just other incubate tokens. Like, Norn is the correct pick here, and I'm going to wheel the Alara. And if I don't, then so be it. Another fantastic-looking pack. Holy crap. I'm actually going to pass the fort's fourth spite now and just take Skittering Surveyor here for more fixing. Zephyr Singer, obviously insane. Tranquil Cove. Well, I guess without the sh invasion of Alara, there's no reason for blue. So, yeah, easy Skittering there. This is so funny. I'm not even supposed to be playing green. <laughs> like splashing green for fixing is currently what it looks like. 
I'm getting torn here. I'm supposed to be red-white. I'm supposed to be an insane red-white deck. Uh, and yet here, all I want to do is be five color. They better pass, start passing me them bombs. Another burgeoning here, I guess. I know a lot of other people have started doing this similar tactic, though, so it could be that uh, all the bombs are getting eaten up, but... I mean, you would expect, like, a Galta and Maverin or something weird to be passed to me eventually, or maybe one of the three color bombs. Another Awakening, my god. Bloodfell Caves, number two. Is that even good? No, not really. Probably supposed to just take the three mana, four, four Vigilance. Golly. Could also play the Hermit. That wouldn't be bad. This is so sad. Oh, there's a fun pack. Oh, we got the Invasion of Zendikar. Okay. There's a Captain Lannery Storm here as well, but F that noise. I'm taking the Invasion. Probably not going to be worth this Splash the Flourish. I might still splash the... Un well, we only have nine creatures. <laughs> uh, this is definitely a do-as-I-say-not-as-I-do type of draft. We could have probably just rolled people on some spicy aggro deck, and instead we're doing this. Daxos. Oh, there's another Skittering Surveyor. Man, Dispersal here, too. I'm gonna say it. This deck's bad. I didn't get enough of the Haymakers. We didn't get past enough of them. And it was unfortunate. I opened Kenrith with the Kunoros and the, uh, whatever it's called. But I will say, I have a lot of fixing. I'm not even going to need that urn anymore. Come on, just give me an Atraxa or something. Something late in here, pack three. Invasion of Kamigawa, that's good. Another Skittering Surveyor, too. I'm sad. <laughs> I'm so sad. Why didn't this work? I mean, it did. Just didn't see the bombs. That's all we're missing, the bombs. Like, yeah, get in my deck. 8-8 eight, eight, Trample Hexproof is another good win con for us. All right, moment of truth. This would be the pack upcoming here. Invasion of Alara. We could wheel it. We did not, man. That's all right. The Inquisitor was the better pick, but... I guess I just take a 4-3 Menace or Converter Beast. I guess the invasion of Urgatha is actually not bad in our deck. We ended up with a couple of invasions that will instantly flip off of it. Jeez. The Spite Wield? That's absolutely insane. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think the deck is okay now. I'm gonna cut, like, the Marauding Dreadship, I guess. Tetsuko. Don't need any of those. 16 lands is more than enough. We have four land cyclers. 
three surveyors and two burgeonings. Man, I really do think splashing the unseal could be correct. Unsealed an Acropolis here as a splash. That doesn't even look bad. Maybe I will just cut the invasion of Urgatha instead. Like, the Spites can all hit our invasion. Like, I only have the uh, invasion of Dominaria and the invasion of Zendikar. And they insta flip the invasion of Zendikar already. Um, so... We don't really need the blue land. Black-red's good. Green-black is good. Red-white's obviously good. Yeah, I won't need any blue sources, but we will run one black. Maybe just one swamp even is okay. If nothing else, this should be a fun one. <laughs> okay, let's go. <laughs> Is it good? I don't know. Is it fun? It looks fun. We have some nice win cons. And yeah, the unseal with all the land cyclers makes the pitching them away early not even that bad. Plus, Kenrith can get them back from the graveyard as well. Okay. Four and a half colors. How does this happen? How does this happen? I repeat, how does this happen? I have three planes in my opening hand. How many planes did I add in this deck? Five? What on earth? Oh, man. Okay. Um, keep this... And I'm going to pitch the Portent Tracker. We can go turn 2, cycle the Host Charger into turn 3, Awakening. So troll. Well, I think that's a pretty easy discard of my 8 drop. Naturally, draw another mountain anyways. Ay ay ay. Act for vigilance. I guess I'll offer the trade if they want to double block. I'm okay with that. This is not what I want to play because they're probably just going to have a deadly derision, but I'm going to go for it. Because if they don't kill this, we are easily going to win. So. They didn't end up turn kill it. Wow, Sunfall Exiles too. Jeez. Gross. I mean, it makes sense. You gotta get rid of that. Okay, couple two twos. I mean, we have all of our mana now. We have more than all of our mana now. <laughs> I guess they're just going to go trade, trade, and I'm okay with that.
Oh, they let me hit it for two. Um, I definitely want to hold lands, though, from now on, since we have, what, four Volcanic Spite in our deck? Okay. Sure. We have a lot of good draws. Sunfall is just a ridic ridiculous card. I mean, in that scenario, it could have been any removal, but I guess we should count our blessings that we got them to use that on just a single creature. Most of my win cons are gone. Kenrith is gone. Crusher's gone. Yeah, Unsealed and Necropolis might just be our best draw. Let's see, I have 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 mana. I'd be 1 mana short of casting Unseal and then casting the uh, Crusher immediately. Ancient does have Reach here. This could be a case of Hidden Reach. I'm definitely going to block if they attack. All right. Sure. Uh, that's still just a trade, though. That's good. Wow, we take that. It's a great draw as well. Currently, they don't have a good block, so let's just offer the trade. I'm just going to let this trade happen. They have a kite sail anyways, and this way... Uh, if I draw a land next turn, we can spite and pitch it. Also, if they don't equip the kite cell, then we can blow up the invasion and eat something. Yeah, like for now, for example, if and when they attack with a 1-1, I'll just blow it up. And eat their 1-1. One, one. Definitely worth it, I think. Uh, they're slightly ahead, but... Another Spite would be good. Two Intercessors would be good. Unleash would be good. That's really bad with Kite Sail for us. Guardian of Girapur. Don't want to flicker our Skyclave back to the battle. That's Really freaking bad. Okay, I mean, gotta do it. They have Inspired Charge? Wow, they do. All right. Not much I could do about that. I mean, I could have blocked the Sentinel and tried to trade with that instead, but... And that's the game. Mmm. Awkward. Awkward, awkward, awkward. What was I supposed to do differently? I guess not play... <laughs> no. If I don't play Kenrith there, it's just so bad. But, like, that's the only way we win, and they had to use a Sunfall for it. Alright, I mean, this hand's okay. We might not even be land cycling too soon. Yeah. We've got all three of our base colors. 
Holy smokes. That's three land in a row? Two land in a row? Wait. How many cards am I running in my deck? Am I on 41 cards? Am I running... Is this accidentally 18 lands? Or 17 lands? Oh no. I think I might have accidentally auto-added one extra land. The tracker was surprisingly good because that's going to let us ramp up to six next turn. Yeah, I'm going to have to pay attention to that for next game. I think I'm running uh, 17 lands, 41 cards, and I definitely do not need 17 lands. Okay. Oh, treasure plus the furnace gremlin is really cool. I think I want to go with the beat down plan here, though, and just go 5-5 five, five, haste, attack you for 8. Small chance we lethal them next turn if they just attack for 5 and then play one big fatty creature. Man, the land cyclers are just so good. How can people not like them? Good early, good late. Everything you want and more. What's your plan, friend? Alright, kill the flyer, yeah. Invasion. So they would have to send both at it to kill it. Or flip it, rather. Oh, and they're just going to pass. Nice. Yeah, I'm okay just to attack for five. We're never double blocking since it has menace, so we might as well add another counter to their battle. They have zero time banks left. Valduck. No equip. Pass. That's a pretty good draw. Um, that's actually better than Intercessor here because I can also play out the Converter Beast. Okay. Looks like they just didn't have anything. Nice. Ah, we'll take that win and hopefully go fix our deck. I am, I am on 1741. Okay. So let's cut one of these planes because we have two planes cyclers. Have we not drawn a single skittering surveyor yet either? I mean, I could, I could almost consider 15 lands. I think it would be a little bit greedy. But we have three land cyclers... No, we have four land cyclers, 
three skittering surveyors. I could definitely go to 15 land, actually. That hand's fine. The double spite helps a lot with these type of hands, like I was saying during the draft. Like, pitch an uncastable, go find something else, you know? <laughs> the one of swamp in my deck. Hey! Nice hit. Okay. And that right there might just be exactly the way we win the game. Just turn two Inquisitor with a bunch of removal. A 3-3 three, three of their own. Let's go easy skittering here. Grab a forest. And then next turn we can spite plus flip our token into a 3-3. Three, three. Invasion of Pyrulia. That's fine. So they're on the blue-green flip deck, revealing a swamp. Oh, Sultai. Sure. Yep, no blocks. Wow, that's a really good draw, too. I think we have to go with that. Um, So we want to get the... Second green, and probably another red. Mm. You know what, I'm just going to no attack, because we can just spite it down. And I'd rather be able to... Stop their negotiator from flipping their invasion if possible. Like, I'm gonna easy chump there, I think. Ooh, we have invasion of Segovia too. Okay. Let's go like this. Let's flip. Assume they're going to chump. Skittering. Get a... I guess we'll get a second white source now. They go. Now I'm going to go for Spite on the Invasion and try to flip it and ambush their Negotiator. Oh, that doesn't matter. Sure. Yeah, we'll just trade. It's good. Ah, Invasion of Amonkhet. Boo. Card's are really annoying. I'm going to discard the spite at this point. Henrith. Ace Trample. Attack for eight. And let's put a 1-1 one, one counter on the 4-4, four, four, or the 3-3. Three, three. If we get to untap with Kenrith, it's going to be hard to lose. So, let's hope they don't have a removal spell here. <laughs> Kenrith is so insane! Feels good, man. Feels real good. Invasion of Zendikar is also insane. Especially in these uber multicolor decks. 
four mana, grab two lands. Oh yeah, and it's only got three freaking uh, defense, so so easy to kill. There's a nice looking hand. This is all the fixing I could ever want. Just needs to find some win cons now. What you doing over there? DC? They're not even hovering over their cards, so... Ah, there they go. Alright, alright. Captive weird turn one. You got it. Wow, good curve. What's more annoying, the card advantage or the one that makes a token? I think I'm going to pitch one of my surveyors here. I think the one that gets card advantage. Go ahead and grab the one of Swamp. Then next turn we can go Burgeoning plus uh, use the token. My Crusher or my Intercessor get taken. Boo. And they took the Intercessor of all things. Yarok! Uh-oh. Okay, we have a Shatter the Source for that though. Yarok is super freaking good in this format, too. There are so many ETBs. Wow, so they're holding up some tricks because they didn't level up their Thalid. And this before attacks so that we can keep up vigilance on our 2-2 here. I'll attack into whatever they're planning on doing. That's fine. Clearly they have something. Sure. Okay. I would guess they are hesitant to run out the Yarok. Naked? Oh man, I didn't even realize. They're also on a bunch of colors. Jeez. Oh, they are going to run it out. Okay. I'm happy with that. That's pretty good. Um... I guess what I'm going to do here is Guardian, Target Surveyor, Shatter Yarok with that on the stack. Didn't need to be on the stack, it could have just waited until end of turn again as well though. Okay, Emoti now, getting a Tetsuko. That makes the Emoti unblockable. It's pretty good. Multicolor versus multicolors is pretty fun. Blocks. 
Another skit skit. Let's attack for seven. So we get the Crusher the next turn, but we are under a bit of pressure because that's four unblockable damage. Would be pretty happy with them double blocking our 4-4. Four, four. Okay, they got six mana, so Emoti could do some work here. Oh, they're just going to flip. That's really good for us. That's the best they got. Oh, strange. I actually like chumping here instead of double blocking. I go to 11. Nice draw. We attack them for... Uh, yeah. 7 here. I assume the 1-1 one, one jumps in front of the 4-4, four, four, but they... So, they have me on a two-turn clock, actually. Because of the Tetsuko. So, this might not even be the right play. It's possible I'm supposed to unseal there and grab back the Alabaster Intercessor. Oh, Jesus. Okay. Well, that's bad. <laughs> eh, I'd say their draw was maybe a little bit better. They just go minus and give their knights plus three plus two or whatever. Yeah. Finally, we have the egg. Well, we're close, but not quite lethal because of the damn Teferi, or the damn new Phyrexia thing. Three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, we're just very dead on board. Oh, man, that's too bad. Good beats. punish them with that block either. Damn! Alright. Well. Need to find, like, one more removal spell. If we could have killed the Tetsuko, we would have been alright. Two and two. We got out-bombed. That's a nice-looking hand. Kind of looks like what our red-white deck could have been. Do I want to go for value here? I don't think I'm going to spite that. I think we're just going to... Uh, Surveyor, because it blocks so well. Go grab a forest. Oh, they're trading? Well, I guess this is not going to work out well. They must have something. Oh, no. They are offering the trade. Wait, what? Why would they do that? I'm so confused. Hmm. That doesn't make much sense to me, but... Sure.
Okay, I think I'm going to flip their order. I'm all right with that. Oh, do they have Cosmic Punch or whatever it's called? Power? If they kill my flyer here, that's really bad for us. Nothing? Dispersal? Oh, well, we get them good here. Don't think we're gonna pitch any of these cards. can still aim the other spite at the invasion of Dominaria to get a Sarah Angel, or if they just don't deal with our Guardian. Yeah, 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 that's really bad for them. It's either Chump, or I get a 4-4 uh, four, four Flying Vigilance. I think I'm going to land cycle here, and then just play out the Converter Beast. It's not super likely they're going to be able to double spell for Strobe Knight next turn, although it's not impossible, but at this point, we're just going to bury them. Yeah. Okay. We're at three wins. I am not complaining about that. I hope we get to at least four. All right, that's the big money break. Well, I guess three wins is technically the big money break. 250 to 1,000, but still getting an extra 400 with one more win is really, really good. Okay, on to game, uh, I guess six it is. We're three and two. That hand looks nice. Jungle Hollow with Portent Tracker. Playing against the Pasta Pirate. No! My secrets! My beautiful secrets. You gotta go a skittering surveyor here, actually, don't you? I mean, the, the tracker is okay to take, but the surveyor is doing all the work. Because I don't have white right now. Oh, he did take the tracker. Okay. I, I don't think that's bad. But the, unless he has another discard effect. Maybe he has another traumatic. Oh, Realm Breaker! Man. Every time I play against Realm Breaker, I'm playing the wrong deck. That is to say, of course I'm on the five-color Dirtle deck when my opponent has a Realm Breaker out. Kind of unfortunate. Let's see, just grab another white source, I guess. Man, hit my Kenrith too. And got a Swamp, which is one of his mains. Come on. <laughs> uh, this is just too funny. Alright, so let's see what tricks he has, because he didn't level up his Aerialist. Nothing. Might have a counter then. Ooh, in this case, I'm just going to pass. Alright, three spells, no land hit. Another aerialist. Holy smokes. Let's go for spite in or end of turn. And I think he might have an artistic refusal in his hand. Oh, maybe not. Something fishy's going on, but... Three more spells! 
Wow. I mean, there aren't going to be too many spells left in my deck at this rate. This is lethal if he doesn't do anything though, right? Alright, finally. Merciless. Take eight. You stupid sexy realm breaker. Stop scaring me. I think we got a little bit lucky there that he didn't really have much to do. Ooh. We'll take it though. We got the four wins. That is all we can ask for. Can we keep it going? Four wins, two losses. Game seven ahead of us. The hand is good. The hand, I repeat, is good. We are on the draw. It would be nice to naturally rip a red source for turn two, in case our opponent has a faster start. But if not, we have the charger for land cycling, and we have burgeoning after. Mr. Baral has resolved. Okay. Oh, no. Into a gross curve. We probably have to kill the preening champion over Baral. Two two a little bit more relevant right now, I think. Invasion of Eldrain. Okay, let's just discard two lands. Mind rot pretty good. I mean, if they want to kill my surveyor just to flip the invasion, we should be alright with that, right? We have a spite in our hands and whatnot. Sure. Sure. That's a great deal for us. Now they don't have the Cryptomancer to protect their flyer. Another discard. Rude. Um, intercessor, I guess. Burgeoning. Kill the flyer while they're tapped out. Get rid of planes. I accept your two damage. Well, if they have artistic refusal, it's kind of going to suck, but... Looks like they did not. I'm just going to attack it for two and leave back my surveyor, I think. I'm going to hold the land. In case they have more discard. Invasion of Olgrotha, sure. Attack it for two, I guess. That's fine. We don't want to attack with Surveyor here. Because if they then kill the Ancient, they get to flip the invasion of their own. Stop! <sighs> Annoying. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to go for the flip of the invasion with Shatter the Source and try to eat one of their creatures.
I think I'm going to eat the Brawl instead of the 3-3. Uh, three, three, or at least attempt to. Okay, that's fine. Oh, they milled my Unseal, though. That's annoying. Green. One. Burgeoning. Okay, well, I mean, we have an 04 flying defender, basically. Could be worse. Uh, I need to find Kenrith. Intercessor would be great. No attacks, I like that. <laughs> Not going to be too many lands left in our deck after all this. They didn't flip their incubator token. Oh, there's a big boy. It's a win con if I've ever seen. Although they do have good triple block. Two three threes in the Baral two four. But that makes attacks for them garbage. Speaking of no lands left in the deck. 14 cards. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve mana available. Both players are above twenty life. It is like turn fifteen. Nobody can punch through yet. Okay, that's not bad. It's better than nothing, anyway. <laughs> there we go, there we go, and now we get to start making some attacks. Let's go ahead and try to flip our... 4-4, four, four, I think, first. Nice. They didn't have anything relevant for our Hexproofer. Okay. Alright. Your move, OP. Island not gonna cut it. Alright, now we're starting going face here. Yeah, baby! I mean, we thinned out our deck of basically all of our lands, so I should be drawing spells, even if they're not the greatest of spells. Five wins? Hell yeah! See, these are always so much more satisfying. Two color, smash face, yeah, yeah, whatever, get your trophy. Five color, work for every win, maybe go one and three. But when it works out, just so much more. Hmm, hmm. Onigiri, playing against the rice ball, and is perfect. Love it. Turn to Inquisitor, fixing, ramp, everything I could ask for. Hand of Dreams. Hello. Turn one beat stick. 
OP is going to try to kill me quickly, so we're going to need to find some of our spite. Oh no, turn two tracker is really good. Oh, that's bad. Four drops incoming. Oh. Turn three Polychronos, as opposed to not turn three Polychronos. Uh, okay. Oh, Guardian was nice. So Polychronos has reach. Polychronos into Urobrask. Uh, although they are letting me trade here. Man, it's... It's so tempting not to block the Urobrask, because then I can flip my invasion immediately. Yeah, I think we're actually supposed to take the hit, even though that's really, really gross. So, this creature is going to enter tapped, unfortunately. But then the good news is, uh, our... Um, Incubator tokens will enter untapped. Gosh, man, passing up that trade with Urobrask is really, really bad, but... You gotta do what you gotta do to survive, you know? So again, I think I'm supposed to just take the hit here. I cannot trade my Inquisitor when I have all of these... Um, tokens to flip. Yeah, I'm at four. Need to find like our shatter or something. Not another surveyor. Go. So they have two menace creatures now? <laughs> Ay, 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 ay. Two, four, six, eight, nine mana. Oh, another menace creature? Are you kidding? Does that kill me? I guess I'm probably dead. Come on, dude. Yeah, I can't block them all. That's so sick. Menace, menace, menace. GG. Well, what are you going to do? Your opponent curves out super well. We didn't have any removal there. I think that's still correct. If I trade with Urobrask, I don't know if we're in a better spot. They still have the Polychronos with the beat stick on it. We don't get to flip our invasion. All of our incubator tokens go smaller. Ah, oh, well. Four spite. Couldn't find one. Good beats. That was a fun one, though. Again, like I said, it's always more satisfying to do well with these decks than it is to go with like some super aggro deck and do well, but... We needed some more bombs on this one. I didn't get enough. I opened Kenrith in pack three or whatever it was, right? Or pack... I don't remember what exactly, but... Pack two, maybe, but I just didn't see the bombs get past like you normally do. So, fun one. Thanks for watching, everybody. Hopefully you enjoyed. This format's great. Hope you're liking all of the crazy plays as well. I'll see you back tomorrow for some more. Bye-bye.